Hi, my name is Adam Wallace from Untangle My Web. If you're a small business, chances are you'll know you need to be doing some form of online marketing. The question is, where do you focus your energy and your money? And this is the question that we find many small businesses simply don't understand or know where to start. Getting an online marketing action plan in place before you start a website redevelopment is one of the smartest things that you can do. And I can't tell you how many businesses have spent uh, anywhere from thousands to tens of thousands of dollars uh, on a website strategy or a website only to find it's just not effective at all. And it's most of the time it's because they don't understand the right questions to ask uh, or how to track and monitor and manage um, their digital strategy. So hopefully by the end of this video you're going to have a better understanding of what those questions are and what you can do about it. So to get started, the first question you need to ask yourself is what keywords are you currently ranking for in Google and are these keywords of value to your business? So as you're probably aware, your customers search in Google for a variety of keyword phrases. It's not uncommon for a business to be found by hundreds if not thousands of various keyword phrases. But which ones are the most profitable? Which ones are coming from customers that have their wallets half out, which are looking for an accommodation or a tour or a product or service that you're offering. So before you start creating content for your website or even start building a website, you really should have a clear list of keywords that you know they have both commercial value, good search volume, low competition and commercial intent. You really need those four things for each keyword to be profitable. So it's well worth spending the money getting someone to do professional keyword research for your business so you can get that master list and then look at where you're ranking compared to those keywords and straight away you'll be able to identify opportunities to attract more targeted visitors to your site and from that you'll be able to be recommended what you then need to do next such as link building activities or creating content. The second question is what is the conversion rate of your website? So if a hundred people land on your website how many of them take an action whether they whether that be to fill in a form, to call you, to subscribe to your email newsletter it might even be to spend five minutes on a page. Um, typically for many tourism businesses that's to make a booking. So do you know what your conversion rate is? Because what you'll find is that you might have a great SEO strategy whereby attracting a lot of traffic to your website but a very poor conversion rate because your website's dated and old and it doesn't have a psychology based design the buttons in the right spot, the right titles, the right calls to action, social proof, risk reducers, uh, all those types of things that subconsciously encourage us to take action on your website. Understanding the conversion rate of your website is uh, essential and once you do that you'll be able to attribute a real dollar value to every action that is occurring on your website. So ideally, getting a website redesigned, you need to make sure that it, it has conversion rate optimization in mind and that the goals are set up in your Google Analytics so you can track the actual value of those inquiries coming in. For example, if you your room price is $200 a night and you're getting an inquiry and you know that you could convert 50% of the inquiries that are coming in, then you might put a value on every inquiry of $100. Getting some of these basic metrics in place uh, can make a big difference to the ability to make informed decisions about where you should be spending your online marketing money. Fairly soon you'll see just how powerful getting the right copy or content in the right position on your website can be to the bottom line of your business. The third question is how much organic non-branded traffic is your website receiving? So the easiest way to explain this would be to look at an example on Google. So let's assume I had a business called Byron Quarter. This is just one we've picked out of the Google search results for Byron Bay accommodation. And as you can see, the moment I start typing Byron Quarter, the business comes up. However, if I change the search result to accommodation Byron Bay and scroll down, we can see that we can also find the same business uh, in the Google Places listings. So they're getting found for organic non-branded traffic for this keyword phrase which is great but if the lion's share of the traffic to your website is coming through AdWords or through branded traffic then there's a clear issue that your website probably isn't as optimized as it needs to be to capitalize on all the other potential traffic that you could be getting uh, for those many keywords that your customers are using. 
The next question gets a little bit more advanced. What is your current cost per acquisition or CPA? So I'll give you an example. If your company spends $100 on Google AdWords and you get 100 visitors to your website and only five of them contact you through the inquiry form, then your CPA or cost per acquisition is $20. So to ensure the cost effectiveness, you also need to look at your average sales worth and the profit you receive on each sale or product. So understanding your CPA um, can also help you decide on how much money you want to spend on various marketing channels. And the fifth question is, do you have a social media presence? Two years ago, we were educating about Facebook and back then most people thought, it was for their friends or family. Now most businesses realize it's becoming pretty important to have a Facebook a business Facebook page, especially with 48% of the Australian population on Facebook. Having a social media presence for your business is now becoming a must. So if you're not sure where to start, then head over to Social Media Star and take a look at uh, this video on custom Facebook pages uh, and you'll find a wealth of information there to help you get started. So if we just recap on these five key points, I know that for many businesses this can be quite overwhelming uh, and they're new terms, it's new terminology and you're not quite sure where to start. And this is why we think for any small business it's essential that you get a dashboard in place that you can use to manage your online activities. Getting this reporting in place is really almost as important as getting your financial accounts in order. The web is becoming such an integral part of revenue generation for most businesses that without some form of reporting that you're looking at on a weekly or at least monthly basis, you're really flying blind and that's going to be very easy for competitors to overtake you if they know what they're doing. So our solution to this problem is our analytics and SEO dashboard and from this one central spot you can uh, keep track of your rankings for your profitable keywords uh, it integrates directly with Google Analytics you can check your backlinks and you can see how you're going on your social media campaigns so let me give you an example of just how this could benefit your business once you've had keyword research done and you understand the keywords that are most profitable to your business then you can load them into the tool in fact we'd load them into the tool for you and you can see where you rank. So if you're not in the top one, two or three spots, then you're really losing out on the lion's share of the traffic. So we can see here that this business is ranked 39th for this keyword and that there's 14,800 Australian monthly searches for that keyword. They're receiving no visits per month for that keyword. So if this is a buying keyword phrase, then they've got a serious problem just on this one keyword, let alone all the others that they're not ranking for. And as, as it happens, this business is going through a complete website redesign and, and SEO strategy to correct these problems. But immediately, just by understanding the traffic, the visits to your site, understanding that it's a word that people will use to purchase from you, then you can identify a significant opportunity to rank. Once you start to drill into this information, uh, you can see how your rankings are changing over time. And this can also alert you to competitor activity. Let's say that uh, a local business is coming up the ranks and engaging an SEO professional to help them rank, then you'll be able to see immediately as your rankings start changing position for this keyword. Uh, you'll also notice it because your revenue will probably start dropping as well. On top of that, uh, you can see how well optimized your web page is for this particular keyword and overall how many rankings you have on page one of Google versus page two, etc. What most people don't realize is that a number one listing in Google gets more than 4.9 times the amount of click-throughs than a number three listing. It's well accepted that a number one listing will give you more traffic than a number two and three listing combined. And as you go down the page, you can see that you're only getting um, the, the dregs of the traffic coming through. So it makes your position in the rankings uh, so much more important for the actual click-through traffic and ultimately the revenue that you're generating. So if you are happy because you've got 20 keywords all on the page one but they're sitting down here then you might only be getting one or two or three or four percent of the overall traffic uh, on Google. So you'd be better off picking one of those profitable keywords and building links and content to get it rising to the top of Google.
but as you can appreciate if you're not tracking the keyword and you don't have a, an appreciation of where you're ranking and the worth of that keyword then you're not going to be able to see these opportunities now if we switch into the analytics view which is pulled directly from Google Analytics you can immediately see that half your traffic is coming from paid Google AdWords so that alone signals an issue where you've only got a small amount 23% coming from organic traffic so there's an opportunity to increase your organic traffic through SEO and link building and reduce the amount you're spending on AdWords and increase the amount of traffic coming from organic clicking on the searches link shows you the keywords that people are using to find your business how long they spend on a particular page and the bounce rate this is a great for being able to look at a particular keyword how many visits you're getting and how long people are staying on your page if you've got a high bounce rate then it indicates that your web page is not designed to convert the visitors for that keyword in many cases so you have a conversion rate optimization issue that could be costing you a lot of money you can also set up your conversions so that you can track every time a form is completed or a booking is made to identify the value of that goal and your conversion rate next you can see the backlinks coming into your website and for any businesses that have been involved in paying SEO professionals to backlink for them they understand that this can be a very expensive business it's not uncommon to spend anywhere upwards from 300 to 500 and above to get backlinking going on to start ranking for keywords the reason people pay for backlinks is to increase their rankings for particular keywords which increases the traffic to your website increases the conversions and ultimately increases the revenue for your business but as I said link building is an expensive business so you want to be able to keep a track of the links that are getting built and the links that are dropping away from your website because many links don't stay around forever in addition to this the social media feature uh, although there's not one set up for this particular business uh, allows you to track your likes uh, and your Twitter followers and your YouTube followers allowing you to measure trends in these as you become more sophisticated with your social media campaigns so as you can see having all of this information in one spot at your fingertips can give you a great insight into how your business is performing what opportunities exist and what you need to do next no matter whether you're a small or large business you need to understand what these five questions mean and how you can measure monitor and manage these areas of your online marketing strategy and from that you can start to make informed decisions about what you do next we recommend that get a SEO dashboard like this set up and ideally tie it into one of our mentoring programs so that on a weekly or a monthly basis one of our staff can walk you through the key metrics and make recommendations on where you should be directing your energy or your marketing budget you can get a analytics and SEO dashboard set up for as little as ten dollars a month uh, depending on the amount of keywords that you want to track so if this is of interest to you feel free to give us a call or email help at untanglemyweb.com